Absolutely. I, I really like this story. Uh, basically, we know that we can reduce traffic jams if people are slowing down in advance of that jam. If if they go as fast as they can until they get to the jam and then slam the brakes, it just makes the jam bigger. It's worse for the people behind them. If cars slow down as they approach because they know it's up ahead, it improves it and it makes the jam go away. And so the, those those clumps that form when traffic's just really heavy in this city would be going away. So what this research uh, shows is that if you have the cars on a network where they're sending information to each other and you tell the adaptive cruise control, hey, I know you've got open road in front of you, but instead of going the speed limit, go five under the speed limit for a little bit, and that's going to improve things. Um, by doing that, it changes the patterns, not just for the cars that are doing it, but for all the cars that are behind that that other vehicle that slowed down a little bit. And so uh, this is very promising technology. The real challenge right now, though, is when you're sitting in that car and it's not going as fast as the speed limit, you see that big gap in front of you, it's very tempting to just take over from the autopilot and say, I want to go faster. And so it's a question of how you're going to convince people to let the, the cruise control be the boss in those situations. Right. And what about tailgaters? I'm just kidding. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there isn't a cure for that just yet. Right. So, Dale, let's turn from the highway to the sky. A new study shows the sun has been getting stronger every year since 2008. I would have thought the opposite. What's going on with our star? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, the sun goes through these 11-year cycles, and we've been the benefit beneficiaries of some really great northern lights these last couple of years. That's because we're at the, one of these peaks. And five, six years from now, it's going to be in a minimum, and we're not going to get many northern lights. And then after that, it's going to peak again. Um, and we get distracted by these 11-year cycles, which are lovely. But uh, researchers went and sort of subtracted those sine waves out of the 11-year cycle just to see what the leftover variability looks like. And to their surprise, they found that for the last 17 years or so, Solar activity has been increasing, and we didn't quite realize it because we've been so distracted by these big swings up and down every 11 years. And so um, what this shows is that the sun is unpredictable, and we don't quite understand ex exactly how it decides when it's going to ramp up or quiet down. In the 1600s, there were almost no sunspots and no northern lights for about 70 years. And here we seem to be heading into a period where there's a lot more of that stuff. So nothing to be concerned about, but just a reminder that we have a lot to learn about how our sun works. Well, I'm glad there's nothing to be concerned about. And finally, yeah. Dan, humans have two arms, but most of us use one more than the other. Researchers check to see if that's the case for octopus. What did they find? Yeah, this is cool. Octopus have eight arms, of course. Everybody knows that. It's right in the name. Um, but the question is, are they right-handed, left-handed, front-handed, back-handed? Turns out octopus are front-handed. They, they don't show a preference of right over left, but they do use the front legs about two-thirds of the time for whatever they're manipulating or doing. And the legs in the back do get used mostly for locomotion, um, but only about a third of the time. And what's cool is you can see those octopus legs just moving around in all those intricate ways. They showed that all the legs are able to do all those things. So there isn't a, a case where some of the arms are more dexterous than others. But when they're grabbing the hold of a, a scuba diver's arm, they're more likely to be doing that with the front limbs than the back limbs. Hmm. Saving the back for what? Well, they just, it's just it's in front of you. They can see it with their eyes. It's just and that's just a preference that they have. And so the thinking is, as we build robots that are going to use these soft movement technologies, uh, it's just always good to see what nature does with them to see what might be optimal. It might be that that actually has a lot of advantages. And so the next question is to find out why octopus have that preference for the front end instead of the back end. Always interesting. CTV science and tech expert Dan Riskin. Thank you. Take care.